Hey everyone, this is Andrew with AGR and as always, it is my goal to deliver reviews that get to the point and don't have any sponsored bullcrap. And today I have a somewhat lesser known title compared to what was previously reviewed on my channel. In my opinion, it is one of the best strategy games that Nintendo was ever a part of. This game is none other than Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Yeah, those weird rabbits with the eyeballs popping out of their heads have one of Nintendo's best strategy games. Allow me to explain. I first got the game on the eShop a couple months ago. I had my eye on the game for a while, but $60 is a high price to pay. So it went on sale for 15 bucks. not to mention it was the Gold Edition, which includes all DLCs, cosmetic appearances, and so on. Anyways, I bought the game, and here we are. There are a total of four worlds. World 1, known as Ancient Gardens, is what I would call the introduction. It has a classic Mario feel to it, and it has a lot of green valleys and bricks that can be used as cover from gunfire. Also, pipes can allow for long distance travel across the battlefield. The enemies are not very advanced and have very few special abilities, but most of the levels are much bigger than you would expect them to be. World 2 Sherbert Desert is honestly not very different from Ancient Gardens, except for a change in some scenery. The Icicle Golem boss is kind of a pain in the... though. World 3 Spooky Trails was a somewhat unexpected area to come across, and I think this might be my favorite world out of the four, because it has fun interactive stages and the enemies actually feel like a challenge. Not to mention the puzzle in between stages feel rewarding, but not needlessly challenging. And lastly, World 4 is the Lava Pit, which consists of the mayhem left behind by Bowser Jr., the main antagonist of the game. It has the hardest enemies, however, I feel like the stages themselves are the least complex out of the four. But I guess that's okay since the enemies more than make up for it. The actual game itself would seem to be rather simple. At the beginning of each stage, you are presented with the main objective, such as defeating all the enemies or escorting an ally. This is what guides stages and completely changes your strategy depending on the stage. There are 8 different characters, well, technically 10 in total if you count the DLC. Each has their own unique skill tree that can be slowly upgraded with power orbs to match your opponent's strength. These skill points can be spent on improved abilities, increased movement, or even getting more coins. Speaking about coins reminds me of all the weapons that you can buy. There are two sets of weapons for every character. The primary is a low to high range blaster, and the secondary can range from rocket launchers to powerful hammers. The abilities I mentioned before also play a big role in combat. For example, the Steely Stare ability, which is used in unison with your main weapon. This is just added incentive to upgrade weapons consistently and makes progression feel more alive. Not to mention that there are quite a lot of special abilities for these weapons. Out of the 8, Stone, Push, Burn, Honey, Freeze, Bounce, Ink, and Vamp, I think Stone or Vamp is probably my favorite. I won't go into too much detail into what these abilities do, but they are at times the difference between a loss or a victory if utilized correctly. So far, we covered the majority of Battle HQ, Team Selection, Weapon Selection, and the Skill Tree, but now I would like to take it in a different direction and talk about the gameplay itself. It is a turn-based strategy game, which means you have as much time as you need to execute your moves. This is what allows for more thought to go behind your attacks, and in turn, a more enjoyable way to play. One thing I wished was in the game was the difficulty setting. I feel like at times it's too easy. This is not to say that some levels are not challenging, but could be harder than they are. Another part of the game that does not sit quite right is all of the puzzles in between levels. At times it can be a really enjoyable way to lead world progression. On the other hand, it just feels annoying that you have to waste so much time just to play the actual game. Some puzzles are not even really puzzles, just big obstacles. So it's pretty frustrating if you just want to play the core game. However, I do find it can be refreshing from time to time. The bosses are also really refreshing and bring a unique spin on the battlefield. During a mid-boss or a world boss, the boss will have what you may call special rules. For example, the phantom can only be damaged after you destroy his spotlights. 
This adds many objectives along with the main objective of defeating the boss, which is always makes a fun challenge. And the Phantom is my favorite boss, not only because he is challenging and engaging to begin with, but also because he has a funny musical number where he disses Mario right in front of all of his friends. This also reminds me that there's a lot of great music in the game and feels unique to each world and boss. It was written by Grant Kirkhope and today I will show just how much effort goes into making a great playlist. Kirkhope even goes to explain his processes of the right music being played at the right time. Usually are a little bit harder, I think, because you can't guarantee what the player's going to do. Like with a movie, it's very linear, so you can write a piece of music that kind of goes at the right point, it's high, and the right point, it's low, it's happy, it's sad, it's big, it's epic, it's, you know, all that. it's easy to do like that, it's very scheduled. But in a video game, you can't always guarantee some players are very good and do things very quick, some players are very bad and do things very slow. So you have to make, try and make sure you find a middle ground with the music to make sure it suits the, the good player and the bad player. Um, and it, you know, you, you, you get as a good a mood as possible. Well, the music's been pretty varied. It always is in a video game. You get a lot of these fight scenes. So obviously that's very heavy, dramatic music with every playing. Uh, in this score, there are some lighter moments, kind of magical moments and some, not comedy, but more, more lighter, amusing. Moments. So there's a lot of light and shade in the score, which is nice. It's not just all the same stuff. Things like this really demonstrate just how much the composers, developers, and everyone involved put into this game. And I think it's really cool to see. I think the last category, which we have not quite touched on, is the story. Arguably the weakest part of the game. The dialogue is usually drawn out and not very engaging, and the cutscenes are nothing special. And the argument could be made that this game is advertised to kids more than adults, but honestly I feel that since it's a strategic game, with some adult jokes sprinkled throughout, I feel that it's a fair balance and it gets a pass by me. Rabbids plus Mario Kingdom Battle is roughly 22 hours to complete and 46 hours to get 100% completion. This is shorter than many titles I reviewed before, however this game has so much charm and complexities it does feel unique. I have not played many strategy games, but I am glad to say this is my new favorite. Through its world building, fun challenges, music, along with many other factors, this truly feels special. It may struggle when it comes to puzzle progression or an engaging story, but I feel that this is easily forgivable in the grand scheme of things. And I'm really happy I shelled out the 15 bucks 
for such a phenomenal game. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more weekly content such as this. It means so much to me as a creator if you could support my channel. Anyways, I would love to hear your thoughts on Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle and any video suggestions you may have. And thanks again for making it to the end of the video, and remember to have a good day.